Hello, 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 and good morning. It's Leon here, back once again, like the renegade master. Anyway, I'm just joking, it's going into some older songs. But we're talking about today how to get over feeling stuck in your business faster. And I guess if you, you've been in business a while, this is probably a challenge that has happened at least, you know, a few times, probably more than a few times. And, you know, a lot of people know it as inaction. Some people know it as procrastination. Feeling stuck in general in your business is just when, you know, you're just not getting past whatever the obstacle is. Uh, most of the time it's making a decision. It's not usually a physical barrier. And I'm going to be speaking about just a few ways that you can look at, I guess, where you're feeling stuck and what you can do to overcome it. And um, if you're like me, you've, you've probably been... I guess faced with it you know in many different ways whether it's making decisions about your next action in your business or challenges or decisions in your personal life that are affecting your business and so I just want to touch on a few things that you can use in order to take more action or get over procrastination faster because feeling stuck is it's not a great place to be as a business owner and I'm guessing if you're in business right now you want to get over these things so you know once again good morning business owners let's go get this let's get into the content so before we get into that, remember, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Just head on over to leonstreet.com forward slash YouTube and you'll be redirected to the YouTube channel where you can subscribe, get all the latest videos and all the previous ones. So <clears throat> let's look at this from um, Dale Carnegie. <clears throat> In action breeds doubt and fear. <clears throat> action breeds confidence and courage. If you want to conquer fear, do not sit home and think about it. Go out and get busy. And, you know, I think this is a great place to start in action, which is for me all around procrastination as well. It's the same thing. It breeds doubt and fear. And so whenever we, we feel stuck, it's usually because there is doubt and fear going on in our minds. And the thing is, the more you get into action, the more you get over your mind, the more you get over the program of fear or how you're feeling around fear, you will you will breed more confidence and courage. and I guess this is the biggest thing and a lot of the times uh, I guess when I've been experiencing inaction fears procrastination it's all mental it's all psychological and it's not as if the evidence in front of me is saying oh this is really going to fail it's around taking you know certain risks it's around just making a decision just to move forward and that's where I want to come from today so inaction or procrastination for me at the moment in this particular talk they're actually one and the same um, because if you procrastinate, you're not taking any action. So therefore, you're in action, right? Yeah, so you're in inaction and you're not moving forward. And and I guess if you're in a place of inaction, or you could argue that it's just being lazy. But most of the time, if, you, if you're a business owner, coach, consultant, expert, you know, you can't really afford to not have any action going on in your business. And therefore, you're in procrastination. You're not making a decision to move forward. And so you're making a choice to basically take no action. So you know what what is what what are the options for you um i guess you could say you know there are excuses and valid excuses i can't do that because or i can't do that if if that happens or what if this happens that type of stuff and and for me these again these come back to the challenges or i, I guess the place of fears and doubts and you know, quite often these fears and doubts can seem very real. Like, I can't do this because I need this information or I need this certificate. You know, I, I know in my time that of coaching business owners, helping businesses, you know, you also come across people who regularly say, oh, I need to get my next certificate before I do this or I need to get my next training on this before I do that. You know, always some kind of valid reason in their world, like valid in their world, not to take an action. and if you're in a place of action, sometimes you just got to do it. You've just got to take that action and see what happens and see if your fears or your doubts are even real, it were true. Um, and the, the more you kind of push forward past any, you know, whatever you give yourself as valid excuses, the more you get done. Um, like I said, you know, I come from a place of me having been there many times. And, you know, sometimes you, you do want to get things perfect, you know, especially if you've got this streak of perfectionist in you where you want to get things absolutely right or you want people to see you, you know, in, in your best way and you want to show up in that way. It can be difficult because you want to make sure everything is in place. But at the same time, 
quite often, you know, it's about taking action. It isn't about having everything perfect. You know, they always say, you know, done is better than perfect. And I agree. Um, if I'd have waited around for a lot of things in my life to be perfect, I wouldn't have got to the results or the places where I, I've been to because I'd have still been waiting for those things to be perfect. So what can what can you consider? Well, I, I guess the more you look at things in life, you know, the more you take um, in action or, uh, you know, a life without proactivity, this is what you're faced with. It's an, you, you, come, you come across either as a person who has an active life or a passive life. And I guess with what you're seeing on screen, what I'm, what I'm sharing with you right now, you know, this kind of emphasizes it. You know, you can either go after an active life or a passive life. Yeah, you can go for experiencing, which is where you actually do something, or witnessing, where you're observing. You know, creating or watching. Yeah, expressing or withholding. And expressing or withholding was probably a big thing for me. Um, and and knowing, you know, the the right ways to articulate yourself and express yourself that can be a big thing. And you know, expressing. Um, you might not seem obvious when it comes to getting out of, you know, feeling stuck. If you can't express yourself, you know, it can create a lot of tension within you and it can create, I guess, other other, res other results in your life that you, you don't want to happen, i.e. not expressing yourself or not sharing different things means you can't get forward because you're kind of building up all this kind of baggage within you. Um, and, and that was a challenge for me as well. And it's taken, it, you know, it took me, uh, I guess, years to, to get to a point where I could express myself freely express myself openly and express myself honestly without feeling like oh perhaps I'm going to upset somebody or perhaps you know I'm, I'm going to feel shame or I'm going to feel you know inadequate in some way or shape or form and it might not seem like an obvious connection with expressing against withholding that that's something that would keep you stuck or keep you in a place of inaction or procrastination but you know believe me it does um you got the next one which is standing out versus fitting in and again, that's another one. Um, perhaps you need to stand out for, let's say, either your audience, your customers, or for your team or people around you to notice you. But instead of standing out, you choose to fit in. Again, this is another way of, of getting stuck in, I guess, inaction or procrastination. And again, these things don't, don't present themselves as obvious things that are. Oh, that's actually, you know, a, a way of feeling stuck by not standing out. And, you know, I, I quite see this regularly. I'll give you a quick story. Um, you know, you hear people say I'm an introvert or I'm, I'm an extrovert, and I don't identify with either of those labels. And I'll give you a quick example. Um, somebody messaged me on LinkedIn this week. So they, you know, if you've been on LinkedIn, you'll, you'll probably know where I'm coming from. I got pitched on, on LinkedIn. So, so basically somebody connected with me and then I receive a message and the next day I receive their basically pitch, their sales offer. So rather than building up a relationship, you know, they pitched me on LinkedIn. And their pitch, um, I can't remember it word for word, but they, they're a coach of some sort and they, the, the person messaged me and said, would I like to join their Facebook group? So I'm on LinkedIn and they're asking me to join their Facebook group um, for people who are um, introverts or identify with the label introvert. Um, <clears throat> and please join the group, you know, get lots of value, blah, 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 blah. And the key thing <laughs> for me is, like I said, I don't identify with either of those labels. It's not a thing in my life being an introvert or extrovert. It just means you're choosing to, as, as I've got in this table, either be active or passive in your own life. And so I replied to the, the, the person and just said, look, I don't identify with either of those labels. And the best way for you to have connected with me is actually just ask me about what is it that I do or what is it that I'd like to know more about type of thing, you know. And the, the point I want to get to here is that whether you identify with introvert, extrovert, again, is just another way of saying that you either, you know, want to stand out or you want to fit in. But for me, like putting labels on yourself as well, um, I, I guess could keep you in, in action. Maybe you're waiting for the right label. <laughs> you don't want that because you'll be stuck again. Uh, and the final one in this table, which is being extraordinary against being ordinary. Now, let me just dig into this one a little bit, because here's where feeling stuck, procrastination, all these things really hold you down like an anchor or a ball around, a ball and chain around your ankle. See, some of these things might make it feel like you're being bigger or you're about to go for something much bigger than your current station, your current circumstance. So, you know, when I was, when I, was I guess, younger in my career, 
I would want to be extraordinary, but I wouldn't want to be outwardly extraordinary in the sense of I wouldn't want people to think I was being big headed or going for something that I shouldn't. And the thing is, it's always what we're thinking. And that's why I said, you know, earlier that a lot of the things when we're stuck and when we're going through inaction, it's all psychological because it's the psychological baggage of what we are going through. And the, the key thing for me is that if you want to have an extraordinary life, therefore you have to be extraordinary in your actions and just moving forward. It doesn't mean that every result's going to be extraordinary. It just means that, you know, the, the law of averages that, and it might even be long, might be, you know, your, your one shot out of 10 was the extraordinary shot. I mean, there's the famous quote by Michael Jordan, you know, where he talks about how many shots that he took, you know, I'm going to find it. Um, Michael Jordan quotes, give me a second guys. Look, see, I'm just doing this live as we run this. Um, on taking the shot. I want to share this with you, especially if you've never come across. And the the quote from Michael Jordan is is basically what has made him a success. So here it is. I'll read it for you as, as I'm just on here. So Michael Jordan, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game winning shot and missed. I've failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed. And for me, you know, that just that quote in itself just shares why it's so important to get out of inaction, just take the action, even if you fail. I mean, Michael Jordan, he's, he's probably one of the most decorated and uh, um, lauded athletes in in the 20th and 21st century right and yet he's sharing there like he's missed more than 9,000 shots and the cool thing about this is he chose action over inaction and if you're in business you're going to have to take a lot of shots and you're going to have to miss a lot of them and rather than worrying about what if it doesn't work out you're just going to have to get on with it and the more you can put yourself in this frame of mind of just look I choose to to be active rather than passive in my own life in my business and therefore move forward, that's what's going to get you the championship or the results or the goals achieved that you want to do. And, and the more you can train yourself to, to come from this place, honestly, the, the more successful you become, the more happier you become, the more that people around you become happier because you're happier, the more you fulfill on wanting to, to make your family proud, make um, you know the people around you who, who matter to you care you know, really kind of take notice of what you do because you're just choosing to take the shot. You're choosing to take the action in your business. So what can you do in terms of move forward? So here's a wider look at some of the things you can do. Just be at peace with your previous inaction. Yeah. And what I mean by that is just be okay with missing your 9,000 shots like Michael Jordan, you know, like it's, it's one of his famous quotes because he just shares it openly. And he's, he's at peace with it. And you might say, well, he's at peace with it because he won six NBA championships, uh, Olympic gold medals and the, and the rest of it. But at the end of the day, you know, if you always look towards the end point of people's lives, you never see the journey and, and the, the lessons in their journey. And, and that's what this quote is for me. And that's why I shared this with you. So be at peace with your previous inaction. Be at peace with your previous failures. And it's like that that was a result. It taught me something. And and this is the key thing here, just being at peace with those things. The second thing is, you know, to, to get past feeling stuck is focus on your why. Focus on why you're doing what you're doing in your business, in your life. And, and know that actually that's the thing that's going to lead you to where you want to be. Because the more you focus on that, the less space you give to fear and doubt. And, and inaction and procrastination is all about fear and doubt you know, indecision, anxiety, all those different things. <clears throat> Even depression, if you let these things carry on for too long, let the, the behavior persist. So focus on your why, focus on your goals. And, and that's, you know, something you should do daily, write your goals down daily. That's a great activity that, you know, um, I, I learned from a lot of mentors and, and it was actually one I picked up from Grant Cardone. Just write your goals down daily, choose your top three goals and write them down daily and just you're reprogramming yourself every day, every morning to focus on what matters most, those goals that lead you to your why. So you you kind of, like I said, you give less space to fear and doubt. And if you've watched any of my previous Sunday morning or listened to any of my previous Sunday morning live streams, <clears throat> you'll probably have come across one of the, the stats that I share is that 
human beings, we have something like 60 to 70,000 thoughts a day. And of those thoughts, 95% of them are thoughts from yesterday. So they're repeated or, or stuff from the past. And 80% of our thoughts are negative. So if you want to get out of fear and doubt, like start your morning with like writing your goals down, start your, uh, or before you go to sleep, write your goals down. And all you're doing is simply reprogramming your mind and you're, you're giving less space to fear and doubt. And that, that's the key. Step three, get out your calendar, start putting things into your calendar. <clears throat> you know, I, ne I never used to be a big advocate of calendars or, um, you know, planning stuff and, the more the more that I look at it, when it comes to marketing campaigns, you've got to plan stuff and you can't be ad hoc. Achieving results in your business, you've got to plan it in. You can't be ad hoc. You can't wait for a result to happen and then plan things. You plan things in and get a result. Um, if you want things to be successful in your relationship and life, start putting it in a calendar. Like get clear on you know your your time available. If you want to have a, a happier life with your your family and your kids, plan time in. And this is this for me was one of the big downfalls of, I guess, feeling stuck not only in business but life, and not really being able to move forward with a lot of things because I just wouldn't put it into a calendar and I live this ad hoc life and I used to have this mantra of everything will come to me that I want because I think it you know it's kind of like um, you know the secret I'm sure I've got it on on the calendar uh, on the bookshelf behind me here it is actually. You know, like the secret, you probably come across this one, guys. Yeah, law of attraction, all that kind of stuff. And the reality is that the more that you put it on here, the more you read into these things, the more that you actually understand that law of attraction, inaction, all those things, they're, they're simply different things to observe unless you take action on them. And for me, getting out your calendar and, and committing to future events that pull you forward actually creates more of this positive, proactive life rather than having a passive life. And, you know, that in itself is invaluable. Getting yourself to the point where you have future pulls, things that are pulling you forward, i.e. your calendar, so planning things in, but actually working towards those things, not just putting them in your calendar and thinking about them, you know, going back to a place of passive or inaction. Um, or step four that you can take to get over uh, inaction and feeling stuck. Just, uh, as I said, mistakes are results, like, nothing more like the more the more you put yourself down or feel bad about them the more you've you've gone into this place of letting your fears and feelings and emotions overcome you yeah and there's nothing wrong with observing that but there's everything wrong when you stay in that place and you don't get beyond that the fifth step is be realistic like whatever you're planning whatever you're going for like sometimes you know we really want to go for what you know uh let's say our five-year goal and make it happen now but you know just be realistic look at where you are right now look at the actions you've taken or not taken in the past year six months whatever time frame you want to look at and just be really realistic about you know now that you've got your calendar out you're looking at your goals you're focused on your why you know be realistic about the time the resources the things you have to put into what it is that you want to make a decision or take action around and then just go for it yeah the next step in order to make that happen is chunk it down so by being realistic doesn't mean that um, you're focusing on things that don't lead you to this bigger why because, you know, I've already said to you in step two, focus on your why. So you might be going for something that that is um, unrealistic in the sense of uh, what you want to achieve. <clears throat> but by by being realistic in terms of your time, your resources, what I'm actually saying to you is focus. <clears throat> so I'm not saying be realistic in the sense of take any lesser action or, you know, action that's not going to lead you to where you want to be. But what I am saying is <clears throat> focus, chunk it down, make it happen. That's the key here. And step seven, and this is a big one. Just give me a second while I get some water. You can probably see the words or in seven which is oar and it stands for ownership accountability and responsibility if you take all of those on board and you live that as your mantra ownership accountability and responsibility and everything that happens in your life is a result of you you will come out of inaction because you'll you'll have no other place to turn when you find that your actions haven't resulted in what you want in your life and when you found that you've hit rock bottom and your back's against the wall because you'll have nowhere else to turn, nowhere else to go. So the more you own things, the more you take 
accountability with what you do and the more you take responsibility, the faster you get out of being stuck, the faster you get towards where you want to be. And I guess that's the final thing that I want to share with you on this, guys. And the distance between your dreams and reality is called action. And it's that simple, guys. You know, get out of inaction, get out of procrastination, get out of feeling stuck and just take the seven steps that I've shared with you today and your dreams will become a reality. And, and trust me, that happens. And sometimes I have to pinch myself with all the different things that have happened in my life and just think, wow, and, and there's so much more that I want to do. But yeah, the things that I have, I'm grateful for. And they were once a dream, believe it or not. They were once a dream, the things that I have right now. So what's the answer, guys? Action, just take action. And so I want to leave you with this. So my final quote on, you know, getting out of inaction and feeling stuck, which is iron rusts from disuse. Water loses its purity from stagnation. Even so does inaction sap the vigor of the mind. You know, everything about who we are and what we are as human beings, even before business owners, coaches, experts, consultants, is geared up to us doing, is geared up to us serving and you can only do that by taking action. Yeah, You can only serve your family, your clients, your community by taking action. And so the more that you get out of inaction, the more that you, you achieve in your life, the more you fulfill on your purpose, you fulfill on your why. And so that's the final step that I want to leave you with, guys, and final thought. So, you know, take action and don't get to a place of stagnation or don't get rusty. Yeah, do more of what it is that is possible for you. And look, don't sweat the small stuff. If Michael Jordan can miss 9,000 shots and still end up being the successful person that he was, you can do the same in your life and business. So go do it, guys. Um, remember, if you want help growing your business and you're not quite hitting your goals in terms of income, you want to get to consistent, you know, 10, 20, 30, thousand dollars pounds or euros a month then remember just comment below this video reach out to me if you're connected with me on linkedin facebook instagram wherever you know you can direct message me or just comment more below this video and then me or one of my team will respond to your message and send you more details about how we can help you to grow your business in 2021 and finally guys remember subscribe to the youtube channel um i do want to push you there and the reason for that is you get lots of great content there's over 150 videos on the channel covering marketing sales mindset you know just business growth and development so go to leonstreet.com forward slash youtube and you'll be redirected to the channel where you can subscribe easily and on that note guys i just want to say thanks for watching today i hope you have an amazing sunday and we've set your week up ahead for you to get into action and start achieving more of your goals and that's what today's all about you know feeling stuck in action procrastination they're just I guess, figments of what we create as our reality. And you can create a different reality when you act. Guys, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.